The buzz of the honeybee is a quintessential sound of spring and summer. But this hard-working insect is facing serious threats, as larger numbers are dying in the UK and worldwide than ever before. These beekeepers from Holsworthy in West Devon, like many in the UK, are worried. The local beekeepers branch has reported losing an average of 30% of hives over the last two winters, when in past years they only lost around 5%. The branch chairman believes their losses are being reflected nationwide. It's more a case of uh, the total losses that beekeepers in general have been suffering. And on a UK basis this is hovering around about a third of all our uh, colonies in the last couple of years. Most of us are aware of the impact of uh, the Varroa mites having on our colonies, particularly since the issue of resistant mites has raised its ugly head. Many scientists believe this Varroa mite is the biggest threat facing British honeybees. They've been affecting our hives since the early 1990s and used to be controlled by chemical spray treatments. But the mites are growing resistant to these sprays and their numbers are growing. Alison House is one of the many beekeepers to suffer from Varroa. The mites are estimated to be responsible for over 60% of hive losses last year. When checking this hive, she can find Varroa on her bee larvae, meaning this hive will suffer from serious diseases. Well, if the Varroa mite gets itself into a hive, when it feeds off the bee, it pierces the exoskeleton, which then weakens the bee and inserts viruses into the bee, which then we get things like deformed wing virus and many other viruses. And once the bees get weak, then they get anything else that is thrown at them, as humans do, because when we get weak, we get bugs and um, diseases. But the Varroa mite is only a very recent threat to the survival of honeybees. Their populations have been slowly declining for over a century, mainly through loss of habitat. Bees, like all pollinators, must forage for food. Meadows like this provide them with plentiful supplies of nectar and pollen from wildflowers. But this meadow is a rare sight in our modern countryside. Farmers have levelled many of these fields to make way for their crops. Over the last century, the commercial nature of modern farming has slowly destroyed the natural foraging grounds for honeybees. Flowering meadows have slowly been replaced by large fields of a single crop like this wheat field. Many experts are now claiming that bee colonies in the countryside are struggling to sustain themselves as their natural food sources are replaced to make way for our own. With the price of cereal crops increasing, more and more acres of land are being dedicated to monoculture farming, where only a single crop is grown. Bees can't feed from these plants, and if they only find fields of cereal crops rather than flowers, their hives will eventually die from starvation. But ironically, many other methods of farming rely heavily on the work of the honeybee. Here on this fruit and berry farm near Exeter, crops need bees to pollinate their flowers to reproduce. In fact, it's estimated bees have a role in the production of around one-third of food in our diets, including the majority of fruits like strawberries and blackberries. Honeybee pollination generates around £200 million per year for the UK economy through farming, and over $100 billion annually worldwide. Farm owner Simon Boyce is concerned. He needs honeybees to grow the majority of his crops, and their disappearance would put his livelihood and thousands of other farmers in jeopardy. There's all the, all the soft fruit crops and we grow over 12 different types of soft fruit, bush fruits and cane fruits, and then all the top fruit crops, the plums, the gauges, the apples, the pears, all those rely on the honeybee. Our business, although it's only one part of our business, it will be severely affected with the uh, decline in honeybees. Other insects do pollinate, but not as effectively or as well as the honeybee. Honeybees also occupy a very important position in our planet's ecosystems. The survival of thousands of plant and animal species is threatened by the decline of the honeybee. Here at the Eden Project in Cornwall, it becomes quite obvious how much bees contribute to our environment. Over 80% of plants in the centre's famous domes would cease to exist if bees became extinct, highlighting just how important insect pollination is to life on our planet. Obviously the insects pollinate their flowers and the, the flowers have evolved to have those insects visit them and they lure them with the, 
you know, the nectar and the pollen, which obviously the, the insects and especially the honeybee needs for their, for their growth. And, um, and you know, we, we've evolved at the same time as well. So what you have to imagine is obviously, you know, the period of time of the world um, developing and everything has done that at the same time. So without one, you wouldn't have the other. Without the insect, without the honeybee, you wouldn't have the apples. And without apples and other food, you wouldn't have us. So I think that's quite an important point, really. The problem has become so serious that the government is being asked to help. Many MPs are urging the Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs to do more to save honeybees from the threat of Varroa. Um, as a constituency member of Parliament, I've actually been writing to DEFRA for several years on behalf of beekeepers, particularly about the disease Varroa, which is now endemic in this country. And you'll have seen from their budgets that although they've put a small amount of money in each year, 150,000, 200,000, into looking at bee diseases, it hasn't been significant enough to stop Varroa gaining ground in this country. But recently, DEFRA have shown they are prepared to do more to stop the honeybee decline. In April of this year, they announced a pollinator rescue plan. They are pledging £10 million over the next five years towards researching honeybees and other pollinators to prevent future environmental problems. This funding will give some of Britain's world-class researchers the chance to study the decline we're seeing in pollinators and discover what actions we must take to stop it. The University of Sussex has just received around £1 million of this DEFRA funding. Its campus is home to the UK's only academic department, which is committed to studying honeybees and has developed a research plan to help reverse their decline. This wax here, this light-coloured wax, is covering cells. The plan's leader, Professor Francis Ratniex, is Britain's only professor of apiculture and beekeeping. He hopes the project will find ways of improving honeybee health. The Sussex plan is very much an applied project. The aim isn't to learn more about the basic biology of the honeybee, the aim is to learn how to help the honeybee. The Sussex plan aims to combat varroa and other diseases by developing practical methods of breeding hygienic honeybees, which can naturally reduce disease within hives. Hygienic honeybees are bees which remove dead or diseased larvae and pupae. By doing so, they reduce the spread of disease from one bee to another. Basically, hygienic bees are bees with good public health. Francis intends on sharing his breeding methods with other beekeepers, so they will lose fewer hives. Whilst he's concerned about recent falls in numbers, he doesn't believe bees are at risk of extinction. Sometimes you hear in the media extreme statements like honeybees are all about to die out. I don't think that's likely. What we do have, however, is a, a problem, but it hasn't yet reached crisis point. Back in Holsworthy, the future is now looking brighter. Throughout the summer, many new beekeepers have joined the association, eager to start their own hives. We're actually struggling to keep up the new members. Uh, uh, sometimes we get 30 people turn up here, whereas we used to get about 8 or 10. It's going to get better and better, I think. Recent media coverage of the honeybee decline has alerted many to their cause, and for the first time in decades, the number of British beekeepers is on the increase. If this continues, along with improvements in understanding the honeybee, hopefully we will still hear their familiar buzz for a long time to come.